With regard to the deadness issue, much of the same thing that there's been a lot of play from the Calvinist about dead means dead and dead means you're unable. And obviously dead corpses are unable to respond to anything so that that's what it means. Um, but even Calvinists aren't taking it that literally because even in Ephesians, it says they're walking uh, in accordance with the the world, the prince of the power and the spirit working. In other words, dead men don't walk either. Dead men don't, um, I mean, you have a lot of different responses to the gospel from quote unquote dead men. Uh, some of them are apathetic to the, the scriptures. Some are, are, are vitriolic and mean and angry towards the scriptures. Uh, some are very interested for a long time and ask a lot of questions, genuinely trying to figure these things out. Um, there's a ton of different kinds of responses, none of which would be consistent with a true corpse like corpse. And so even Calvinists are interpreting dead idiomatically in some way. And so the question is, what does the scripture mean when it uses the term spiritually dead? And I think if we look at examples like the prodigal son, which mm -hmm. was said to be, he's once dead, but now he's alive. He's, he's alive. once lost, but now he's found. Mm -hmm. um, that that's, that's a good idiomatic way of understanding deadness as being separated due to rebellion. And that how do you, how do you overcome that? Well, you draw near, you come home. And so what is the solution for spiritual deadness? Well, John 20, 31 says, these things have been written so that you may believe and that by believing you may have life in his name. So what do you need to do in order to get new life? You believe in Jesus. And so you come to the life giver. Uh, Jesus said in, in uh, John 5, 40, you refuse to come to me so that you may live. He didn't say, I refuse to make you alive so that you would come to me. Uh, he's putting that on them. You come to the life giver, you eat of his flesh, you drink of his blood, as he goes on in John 6 to argue, in order to get new life. You're not unilaterally made alive, regenerated, in order to uh, to, to believe. Um, the, I think that's where the order salutis, the, the order is backwards on the Calvinistic system, is that people are made alive in order to believe on Calvinism. And I'm saying, no, 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 you come to Jesus in order to be made alive, because you were once dead, separated due to your rebellion. And the solution to that deadness is to come back to the life giver so as to receive new life in him. Now, at some point in time, we're, I want, I'm trying to I'm trying my best to hold off. <laughs> uh, we'll get to the you part and this issue of of regeneration, um, because that would be an easy segue right there. But I'm trying to hold off because I want to cover uh, some of the other things as well. Um, but so I, and, I, and I agree. I agree because now I have. The one thing that I push more than anything else is that we shouldn't have a conclusion based hermeneutic. Our hermeneutic needs to be defined and it should be consistent. So me having I have a literal grammatical historical hermeneutic, which has, which doesn't mean that I have to take every single word literally. And so when we come to this word necros dead, that means that you're absolutely dead because it, it literally says, let me put it back on the screen. Uh, it, it speaks of uh, idiomatically. What does he mean by dead? And he says right. in sins, in your trespasses. That's how you did not necessarily actually dead, dead, as so you can't do anything because we see, as you say, in the passage, someone is doing something. But then also uh, the prodigal son. And so what does it mean dead? I think it just simply means to be to be separated, just like the prodigal son, just like we also see in uh, in Romans six in Romans six. And so now before I get to how we we start dealing with how you become alive, um, I, there's a little bit of difference between you and I, but there's also a little bit difference between you, you and I and the Calvinists as well. Um, and so I think that for me, and I think you agree that totally depraved, I don't have a problem with it, with the term. Uh, but then again, depending upon, depending upon who you ask, what does this term mean? Since there's no board, no council that sits around and says, this is what this word means. This is what this means. And so you ask five Calvinists, you're going to get, you may get five five different arguments or definitions. And so, and I know I've seen different times where on your channel, you're dealing with a Calvinist, a Calvinistic interpretation. That's not like this other person's Calvinistic interpretation. So mm -hmm. th therein lies the problem uh, in many cases, but um, I, I, I don't see dead meaning dead that you can't do anything. Um, because again, in the old Testament, we see people who same thing and they respond. And so the issue is, and we'll deal with this in a little bit, but how do they respond 